to make the most of the square root property, we need one powerful trick, completing the square. Let's first review how the square root property goes with an example. So I'll take x minus 3 squared equal to 5. To apply the square root property, okay, to get rid of the square, we'll just plus minus square root of the other side, which will give the new equation x minus 3 equal to plus minus square root of 5. The 3 goes to the other side, and we get our solutions x equal to 3 plus minus square root of 5. Now, go into our equation. Okay, let's expand all that out and see what type of problem we're really trying to solve here. So I'll move the 5 to the other side. Then we'll expand the x minus 3 squared using FOIL. So x minus 3 squared is just x minus 3 times x minus 3. We FOIL and we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now minus a 5 is going to give us x squared minus 6x plus 4 equal to 0. So this is the equation we're really solving here. You'll note if you try to factor this using older methods, you're not going to get anywhere. That's to be expected because if you look at the answer we're getting, the roots are not the type of roots we've worked with in the past. So the big question then is, if I've got a quadratic like this, how do I get it into a form where I can use a square root property? The key is completing the square. So. We'll give you the formula, an example, and then we'll show you where it comes from, and then we'll take a look at the different kind of outputs we get from the formula. Completing the square. The equation is x squared plus 2ax equals x plus a squared minus a squared. You'll see variations for this formula in the literature. I like this way because if I identify the 2a, the a goes directly into the other side, and I don't need to use any fractions. Let's look at an example. If I have x squared plus 6x, okay, we identified the item before the x, so that's going to be 6. So 2a is equal to 6. I cut it in half to get a 3. If I drop it into our completing the square formula, I'll get x plus 3 squared minus 3 squared. So this will go to x plus 3 squared minus a 9. If I want, as usual, we could check our work just by expanding things out and make sure we get the original back. So if I take x plus 3 squared minus 9, okay, again, we'll just x plus 3, x plus 3, we'll FOIL, which gives me x squared plus 6x plus 9, minus a 9 gets rid of the constant term, and we have x squared plus 6x, which is what we started with. Where does this formula come from? We already saw the heart of the argument on the previous board. If we start with x plus a squared, I write that as x plus a times x plus a. We FOIL and we get x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. I move the a squared to the other side and we have our formula. This formula, not so hard to dig out. If you remember, it has something to do with x plus a squared. Important point to note, in the formula before the a squared, we have a negative sign. That never changes, regardless of whether a is positive or negative. It's going to be a common error. Let's check that. So if a is positive, okay, well, then I'll have positive a squared, and then the negative sign is not going to change. If a is negative, okay, remember, this goes back to day one. If I have minus b squared, then the negative is supposed to represent multiplication by a minus one. So what we're really doing here is a minus one times b squared. PEMDAS says you do exponents before multiplication. So the minus one waits until we do our squaring first. So that means if I put a negative in here, we square, Positive comes out, and then the negative out in front, still a negative. Let's look at another example. So we'll take x squared minus 6x. Okay, this is just changing the sign for the previous example. We look at what's in front of the x. That's going to be a minus 6, so 2a equals minus 6. I cut it in half. a is equal to minus 3, and then we just drop it in the formula. So I'll get 
x minus 3 squared minus quantity minus 3 squared. The minus 3 squared becomes a 9, and so we wind up with x minus 3 squared minus 9 for our answer. Of course, we could just expand to check, but we won't do that here. Now, because we're dividing by 2 to get a, that's going to bring fractions into our work, so we want to try to get a little bit more comfortable with fractions in the formula. Let's try x squared plus 5x. The item before the x is 5, so we'll have 2a equal to 5. If we divide by 2, I get a equal to 5 halves. We put it in the formula, I get x plus 5 halves quantity squared minus 5 halves squared. The 5 halves squared is going to go to 25 over 4, and we get our answer, x plus 5 quantity squared minus 25 over 4. Again, we could check, which is an exercise of fractions, but we won't do that here. Final example, I have x squared plus 1 half x. Business as usual. We take a look at what's in front of the x. I get a 1 half. 2a equals 1 half, so I cut it in half to get a equal to 1 fourth. We drop it into the formula. x plus 1 fourth quantity squared minus 1 fourth squared. The 1 fourth squared squares up to 1 16th, and then our final answer is x plus 1 fourth quantity squared minus 1 16th. Again, we could check by expanding, and again, that's going to be an exercise in fractions. We leave that to you. Let's go back to the type of problem on the first board. First, we'll give you a checklist to organize all the steps. What we're trying to solve, x squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. Always as a first step, we clean up our problem. So that would mean remove parentheses, fractions, what have you. The idea though is we've got to wind up in the form x squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. We perform completing the square to the first two terms, the x squared plus bx. Then, with what comes out, I want to isolate the x plus a quantity squared, which just means push all the number stuff to the other side. Now, we can perform square root property to get rid of the square. So that'll give us, on the other side, plus minus square to c. This equation we solve by just moving a to the other side, and then we could check our work if the answer is reasonable. Let's start with an example which we could have done by factoring. So you could check against that. I'll take x squared minus 6x plus 8 equal to 0. This is already cleaned up, so we don't need to do any work there. We take the first two terms, x squared minus 6x. Completing the square there, we've already done on a previous board. We want to just focus on the overall structure of the problem now. So what we'll do, I'll take the result from completing the square and substitute it in for the x squared minus 6x. That gives us the equation x minus 3 squared minus 9 plus 8 equal to 0. The minus 9 plus 8 is a minus 1. When we push it to the other side, that's going to give us a 1. So now I'm trying to solve x minus 3 squared equal to 1. That we can do using the square root property, and I get x minus 3 equal to plus minus square root of 1, or just plus minus 1. We push the 3 to the other side. I get 3 plus minus 1, or the answers 2 and 4, which we would have gotten had we factored. Of course, we check our work. So I would take the 2 put it into the original equation. For instance, 2 squared minus 6 times 2 is 12, plus 8. That's going to give me a 4 minus 12 plus 8, which definitely goes to the 0. Similarly, we'll get equal to 0 if we put in the other solution of a 4. So both of these check out. Let's take a look at something that's a little bit more strenuous. So let's bring in some radicals in the answers. Note, we wouldn't have been able to get a solution here if we had gone to factoring. Let's try x squared plus 2x minus 2 equal to 0. 
So we're going to focus on the first two terms to complete the square. Okay, this is already cleaned up. I have 2a equal to 2, the 2 is in front of the x, so we cut it in half to get a equal to 1. Completing the square is going to give us x plus 1 squared minus 1, 1 squared is 1, and then we bring in the minus 2 from the equation equal to 0. I push all the number stuff to the other side, which gives me x plus 1 squared equal to 3. We use the square root property to get rid of the square, we plus minus square root the other side. So I have x plus 1 equal to plus minus square root of 3, and I push the 1 to the other side to get our solutions. So x equal to minus 1 plus minus square root of 3. Now, can we check this? Definitely. From the section on radicals, we have all the tools I need to check. Typically, you're not going to want to check if your answer comes out this complicated, say in a testing situation, just because there's not enough time, but it is worth knowing how to do in the exercises. So let's check. So first, what are we going to do? I'm going to take x squared plus 2x minus 2. Let's look at each part with, say, the answer for minus 1 plus square root of 3. If I square minus 1 plus square root of 3, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to FOIL. So this is minus 1 plus square root of 3 times itself. And then what's going to come out? We'll have a 1. We'll have in the outside and inside terms, we'll get a minus 2 square root of 3. And then the last term is a square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is itself just 3. What's under the radical? When I put all that together, we get a 4 minus 2 square root of 3. Middle term, 2 times minus 1 plus square root of 3, we just distribute. So we get a minus 2 plus 2 square root of 3. And finally, we just bring the minus 2 in. I'm going to add up the parts that have the buckets under them, and you'll notice everything just cancels nicely to give me a zero. And that's the check for objects that look like this. Our next two examples are on the difficult side, but if you can get through these, you're in very good shape. Both of these equations, math majors run into sooner or later. First one, let's find the solutions of x squared minus x minus 1 equal to 0. We go through our checklist. So first we're going to complete the square on x squared minus x. 2a is equal to minus 1. We cut it in half, we get a equal to minus a half. When I complete the square, we sub it in for x squared minus x, so I'll get x minus a half squared minus quantity minus a half squared. And then in the equation, we have minus 1 equal to 0. The x minus 1 half squared I leave alone. The 1 half squared goes to a 1 fourth, so minus 1 fourth. The 1, to get everything in fraction form together, I'll change the 1 to a 4 over 4. And so we have a minus 1 over 4 minus a 4 over 4, which is a minus 5 over 4 and then I'll push that to the other side. So we have the equation x minus a half squared equals 5 over 4. Square root property comes in. To get rid of the square, we plus minus square root the other side. So that's going to give me x minus a half equal to plus minus square root of 5 over 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so this is plus minus square root of 5 over 2. We move the 1 half to the other side, and then I can put everything over a 2 to get x equal to 1 plus minus square root of 5 over 2. Now, that's our answer. It's a good exercise to check this one, but we're going to leave it to you. One of these answers is an interesting rabbit hole all of its own. You can look it up on Wikipedia. This is the golden ratio. So that's 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And that appears in many interesting places, but I'll leave it to you to chase that down. Next, let's try x squared plus x plus 1 equal to 0. So now, still going to have a 1 in the middle, only now it's plus 1. We apply completing the square to the first two terms, the x squared plus x. 2a is going to be what's in front of the x, so that's going to be a 1. We cut it in half to get a equal to a 1 half. 
We drop that into the formula, and then we're going to substitute that into the equation. So I'm going to get x plus 1 half squared minus 1 half squared plus 1 equal to 0. The 1 half squared is a quarter, 1 fourth. And the 1, again, I'll write as a 4 over 4. Minus 1 fourth plus 4 over 4 is 3 fourths. And when I push it to the other side, it turns into minus 3 fourths. We can apply the square root property to get rid of the square. We plus minus the square root of the other side. And note, we're going to be taking a square root of a negative number. So if we're working over the reals, no solution. But if I'm working over the complex numbers, we could bring in that machinery. So what are we going to have? I'll have x plus 1 half equal to the square root of minus 3 over 4. Okay, note the square root of 4 is equal to 2, so that can come out. And then for the numerator, square root of minus 3, well, we'll have a square root of 3, and then square root of minus 1 we rewrite as i. So when I push that 1 half to the other side, we get for an answer, okay, the solutions are x equal to minus 1 half plus minus square root of 3 over 2 times i. And then again, this shows up in undergraduate math major.